I went into the living room to have a drink. It was only two o'clock in the afternoon, but I had just left my lawyer's office. I wanted a divorce. Between lunch and dinner, there were very few people in the living room. Bartender Joe asked me if I was having a bad day. You could say that. I just filed for divorce from Linda, I replied. Sorry to hear that. How long have you been together? Next month will be twenty years. The divorce should take place in November if she doesn't mind, and I'm sure she won't. I looked around and saw a pretty woman sitting alone in a booth. I asked Joe if he knew her, and he said her name was Beth and her divorce was finalized today. I decided to talk to her. Well, worst case scenario, she could kick me out. Hi, my name is Jay. Do you mind if I join you? I don't think I'd be the best company, and besides, I'm not looking to meet new people, if you know what I mean. Understand. Joe told me your divorce was finalized today, and I filed mine today. It would just be nice to talk to someone. She looked up at me and stared for a few seconds. Sit down, Jay. By the way, my name is Beth, and I'm single again after six years of marriage. Next month will be twenty years of my marriage. Would you like to exchange stories? I asked. Beth smiled at me. I told her I hadn't eaten today and asked if she wanted to have lunch. We were both already drinking by then, so it seemed like a good idea. I called Joe over, and we each ordered a Ruber sandwich and fries. I also asked Joe to bring us another drink. Wow, same taste in food. It was a good start. She was a pretty woman, probably in her early thirties. I would call her a girl next door type if I were a child. You don't pay much attention to it until you look deeper. She was quite attractive, but not the type to wear a lot of makeup or go to the hairdresser every day. Some might call her a gray mouse, but she was much more beautiful. She thanked me for sitting down with her, said that she was very depressed, but talking to someone helped. She started telling me a little about herself while we were eating lunch. I was born and raised here. Went to college to become a teacher. Always loved children. I have been working in an elementary school for eight years now. Dated a little, but nothing serious happened until I met Ray. He was my now ex-husband. He was a salesman who sold audio equipment to schools. When I first saw him, we somehow immediately clicked. We talked for a while, and the next time he came to school he asked me out. The rest was mostly the usual meeting period. Six months later he asked me to marry him, and I agreed. Our life was pretty normal. I worked at a school, and he was in sales. Sometimes he went away for a couple of days on business trips, but that was expected. There was nothing in our life that caught our eye. We sometimes went out, watched films and danced, although I was never a great dancer. He wanted children, and we tried. After a couple of years, I saw a specialist, and she told me that I could have children, but it would be more difficult due to my physical conditions. The doctor said that my tests showed that it would simply be more difficult for me to get pregnant. I even took some medications to help, but to no avail. Ray started to get annoyed with me, but there was nothing I could do. We seemed to be getting further and further apart. I offered to adopt a child, but he said that he didn't want someone else's child, he wanted his own. I didn't have that problem. I was with the children every day and loved them all. I didn't really miss not having my own children. When I came home, it was a place where I could take a break from the kids for the evening. I still wouldn't mind having my own children, but I would like to have them for Ray. Then last year he came home and said we needed to talk. I knew something was wrong. He told me that he was having an affair with his secretary and she was pregnant. I didn't know how to react to this. He told me he loved me, but she was having his baby. The first thing that came to my mind was what a terrible father he would make. I felt sorry for the child. He will have a traitorous father who thinks only of himself. We were arguing, and I told him he could be with his girlfriend and her child. I'm going to get a divorce and move out of my apartment by the end of the week. He tried to hug me, but I told him to keep his dirty hands off me and pushed him away. That night I stayed with my parents, and early the next morning my dad and I went to the apartment and took all my personal belongings. Everything else had to be decided through the courts. We owed about as much as we owned. 
He liked to show off and always spent a lot of his money, and a little of mine, too. We divided what we had left, and I was able to keep the car and the money I saved before marriage. So I basically started over. I rented a nice apartment and got most of the furniture I wanted. He is a goat, I said. What? she said. Your ex is an asshole. He had a wonderful woman who works with children and, if you don't mind me saying, quite attractive. She blushed. He only thought about himself. I think you're much better off without him. We finished our lunch and Beth said she felt much better now. Instead of telling her my sad story, I suggested we meet again and tell her about it another time. I had two drinks, but I didn't know how many Beth drank since she was there before I arrived. I offered to take her home since she might have had too much to drink. Jay, you're very sweet, but I don't think I'm ready. I cut her off. Beth, I'm just going to take you home in your car to make sure you get home safely. I'll call a taxi and it will bring me back here to pick up my car. I promise, that's all. I just want you to get home safely. You can ask the bartender, Joe, I'm a normal guy. I smiled. We got up and I walked her to the car. She wasn't drunk, but why take the risk? I opened the door for her and saw a lot of legs when she sat down. I don't think she noticed I was looking. I took her home and walked her to the door of her apartment. I had already called a taxi to pick me up before I left the living room. She thanked me for caring about her well-being. I asked for her phone number and she smiled and gave it to me. I asked her if she knew of any apartments for rent because I was moving in the next few days. Her block consisted of condominiums, and many of them were rentals. She said she would ask and let me know if she found anything. It was a pleasant area, and most of the apartments were two or three bedrooms. Beth's apartment was a two-room apartment, she said. The taxi arrived, and I handed her the keys to her car and apartment. We said goodbye, and I went home, where one hell of an argument awaited me. I'll explain exactly what happened. There's a lot of this I probably won't tell Beth. My wife Linda and I met right after I graduated from community college. I completed a two-year course to become a damage surveyor. Linda got into a minor accident and I stopped by her work to see how bad the damage was to her car. I explained to her what the company would give her for the damage. I worked for an insurance company that repaired a lot of small claims in their auto repair shops. If the customer decided to go elsewhere, we would write him a check. Linda decided to use the services of our specialized body shop. That is, for her car, her body needed nothing. I was attracted to her almost immediately. She worked for a small newspaper and at that time wrote obituaries, advertisements, and even took a few photographs. I asked her out on a date and she agreed. We started going out constantly. The first time we had sex together was great. Less than seven months had passed since we got married. Over the next two years we had two children. Linda's mother looked after the children while Linda and I worked. I was in charge of a four-county area and would sometimes spend a night or two away from home as my area was largely farming country. Everything depended on my schedule. Neither of us seemed to have a problem with it. Linda was a good mother and I thought I was a pretty good father. We took the kids on vacations, to amusement parks, the zoo, and just about anywhere families went. Our sex life was pretty regular, especially when I was gone for a day or two. There was something about being away from my wife that turned me on. I never cheated on her, although I had many opportunities in my work. To many people, our sex life would seem rather vanilla. A few years ago, she received a promotion. She was much more involved in advertising and often contributed newspaper supplements. She reviewed many of the new and renovated businesses that were in and around the city. It was only about six months ago that she seemed to change. Even the children noticed this. My daughter went to community college and was a freshman, but lived at home. My son was in high school, about to graduate, and had already been accepted into the same college. Linda seemed to argue with all of us more often. I told the kids that this was probably a life change and we would have to live with it. I thought I'd do something special for Christmas and booked a holiday cruise. We will leave on Christmas Eve and return on New Year's Day. 
Maybe this will get our marriage back on track. I was going to keep it a secret until Thanksgiving. She often told me that I wasn't as much fun anymore. I didn't know what she expected from me. Maybe now we wanted different things I didn't know. Dad, my daughter Becky said, Mom always goes somewhere when you are not at home. She never went out so often. I asked her where she was going, and she told me where to go with her friends. So why are you telling me this? Don't you believe her? I asked. I didn't say I didn't believe her, but sometimes she goes out twice a week. It's always when you're not at home. She gets home by midnight, but I think that worries me. The next day I talked to Linda and asked her if we should go somewhere, but she kind of barked at me. I didn't do anything wrong. I go out with friends and some of my clients. The children have grown up and are practically left to their own devices. I get bored when you're not here, so I go out every now and then. I mentioned to Becky that I had spoken to her mom and explained what she had told me. Have you ever seen her friends? I asked. A couple of times they got out of the car to let mom in. Honestly, I think they were overdressed. They always had their hair combed and wore sexy long dresses. It was what you'd expect to see in Las Vegas or something like that. One woman was black, but my mother said it was one of her clients. It has something to do with the opening of a new nightclub. How does mom dress? Does she dress like other women? No, but she wears sexy clothes. She even borrowed a few of my outfits, which I know are too tight for her. I would like her to become a mother again. Hopefully this is just another phase she's going through. It got me thinking when Becky said another phrase. Linda has done things like this before, but the kids never told me about it. I always trusted her, so I never had any reason to test her. Becky was a very smart girl and had a tendency to notice changes. I asked my son Brian about this, and he said he thought the women Linda dated were sexy, but agreed with Becky that they always seemed to overdress. He also didn't want to see his mother in a dress that was too short. Linda was quite short. She was only 5 feet 1 inch tall and weighed 120 pounds. She worked hard to look good, and it paid off. She was a sexy woman, but children don't like to think of their mother that way. One evening, Linda called me on her cell phone and told me that she was going to have dinner with one of her clients in one of the waiting rooms. It was about 30 miles from the city. She'll be home a couple of hours late. I just found myself in the common area of the hall, looking at the wrecked Mustang and the even more battered driver, and decided to go inside and see what was happening. I walked through the door and told the greeter that my wife was sitting there and I needed to talk to her. I walked up to the table and surprised Linda. Jay, what are you doing here? She asked and seemed a little nervous. Opposite her stood a woman who looked very sexy. It was just as the children told me. She looked and dressed like a model. She just looked at me. I was right on the road when I got the call. Who is your friend? Oh, sorry, Jay, this is my client, Charlie. Charlie, this is my husband, Jay. Charlie limply extended her hand. I didn't intend to kiss him, but I took him in my hands and held him for a few seconds. Jay, I'm sorry, but this is a business dinner. Charlie and I need to talk about the new nightclub she and some of her friends are opening in the next month or so. They told me an exclusive story. I shouldn't have come in, but I was nearby. See you in a couple of hours. I called the kids and told them I was bringing them over for pizza. Charlie, it was nice meeting you. I kissed Linda quickly. I knew she was annoyed, but I didn't care. I left the living room, called the kids, and told them that mom was out with one of her clients and that I was taking them out for pizza. I talked to them and told them that I had met their mom's friend Charlie. They were right about her friends being overdressed, but she looked quite impressive. I explained to them that their mother had told me about a new club that would be opening and that she would have exclusive access. I think they were at least glad that I knew what was going on. We ate pizza, and each of them told me about school. When Linda got home, she told me how much I embarrassed her. She said that I humiliated her. What the heck? All I did was stop by and say hello to my wife. I knew that when she was in this state, it was useless to argue with her. 
She even hinted that because of me she almost lost her exclusive story. What the hell is she hiding? I knew something was wrong here, but I couldn't figure out what it was. The first thing that came to mind was that her friends were in same-sex relationships. I never heard her make any comments about other women other than the usual compliments about appearance or clothing. If I found out that she was sleeping with another woman, I wouldn't know how to take it. Like many men, I have seen an erotic film with two women, or a man and two women. It was somewhat exciting, but when I imagined my wife being one of these women, it didn't seem all that exciting. Damn, she's the mother of my children. If she slept with this woman, it might be a conversation starter. But if she cheated on me with another man, I would never talk to her. I imagined the worst, even though she could just be doing her job. Over the next few weeks, she barely spoke to me unless she had to. She was nice at our son's graduation, but I think it was just for show. Her parents and mine were present. We definitely needed to talk about our marriage and where it might be going. Since I met Charlie, I haven't left home. She didn't go out with her friends either. This also made me suspicious. On Wednesday, I told her I would be leaving for the night on Friday, but would be back on Saturday morning. She didn't tell me anything and went to work. I didn't really need to go anywhere, but if what Becky said was true, Linda would be coming out that evening. Worst case scenario, I make a mistake and end up spending the night in a motel. I called home around 8 p.m. and Brian told me that mom was out with her friends. The woman just picked her up. She told Brian that she would be back late as they were going to a party in a nearby town. He told me about the club and I knew where it was. This was not the kind of club that married women and mothers should go to. I walked in and was surprised how crowded it was inside. The audience was mostly young, many dressed in extravagant outfits and with lots of piercings. I grabbed myself a drink and went up to the second floor. It was more of a balcony, but there were several tables there. A woman approached me, and I realized that she was most likely easy to reach or simply worked at a bar. I thought that if she worked there, it would be a good cover, since I would look suspicious sitting alone. I bought her a drink that was probably mostly soda, but cost a ton of money, and another one for myself. She was talking to me, and I was trying to listen to her, but at the same time I was looking for Linda. Finally, I found her on the lower level at a table with Lisa, her friend, who was divorced, and, as she said, no longer communicated with her. If she was friends with Lisa again, it would be bad. Lisa was accused in her divorce of running a brothel out of a bar she managed. Linda told me she knew nothing about it. I had no reason not to believe her then. After the divorce, I heard Lisa left town, but now I remember what Linda told me. They were with two other women who were again overdressed. One of them was Charlie, and the other one I didn't know, but she seemed Asian. One of Charlie's hands was holding Linda's hand, and the other was on her hip. Damn it. I sat and watched how much friendlier they would become. I was far enough away, but it seemed to me that Charlie was caressing Linda. Charlie appeared tall, but wore very high heels. Compared to Linda, most women seemed tall. The Asian woman seemed a little shorter. Both looked glamorous, but out of place. The girl I was with was happy that I kept buying her drinks. Her job was to get me to buy her as many drinks as possible and maybe have sex with me for money, of course. Well, for everything else, there's MasterCard, right? She called herself Bambi and asked if I wanted to get a room. She saw me watching Linda below and asked if that turned me on. She put her hand on me and said, I guess not. What are you interested in? I can arrange this for you. I told her I was having a bad day, but maybe I'll come back another day. I saw Linda and the other three women stand up and move towards the exit. I said goodbye to Bambi and gave her $20. I went downstairs and followed my wife and her friends into the parking lot. Linda got into the car with Charlie, and Lisa and the Asian woman got into another car. Of course, I followed Linda, and they drove about a mile and stopped at a motel. They didn't even stop at the front desk. They must have already booked the room and the keys. I was about to go to the front desk when I saw Lisa and an Asian woman getting out of the car. I stayed away so that Lisa wouldn't recognize me.
They also walked past the counter and took the elevator. I walked up to the front desk and took a chance by asking if my wife Linda Bradford had made our reservations. She often forgets things. The administrator smiled and checked the computer. Yes, sir, she made the reservation this morning. I didn't know if I was lucky or feeling depressed that she was paying for this room. At least I got the information I needed. I asked if she left a key card for me. Can I see your ID? He was polite and just did his job. I showed him my driver's license. He said she was given both cards this morning. I could get another one for $5. I shook my head and said, I'll make her give me that money back, handing him $5. He smiled and said that his wife always forgets something too, handing me a new card. They were in room 421. The room was booked for two people, so he had no reason not to believe me. I didn't know what to say or how to take it. Unless she is very convincing, our marriage may end. I was really hoping they were just sitting around talking business, but deep down I knew that wasn't the case. The only thing they hide in a motel for is something they don't talk about. It was a two-room suite. About twenty minutes had passed since they entered the motel. I used the card and slowly opened the door. I heard them in the next room. I really felt stupid standing there. I've read a lot of stories about husbands doing this, but in practice it was harder than I thought. I couldn't believe how messy this room was. They must have undressed as soon as they entered the room. There were clothes lying everywhere. I saw my wife's dress and her personal underwear. This was definitely not the lingerie she wore for me. I saw what was probably Charlie's clothes. There was also a wig and other underwear. I heard sounds from the next room. I knew it was Linda's moaning. I had been hearing it for the last twenty years. It made my stomach churn. My wife is cheating on me with another woman. I never thought about carrying a gun or anything else. I had a pocket knife that I always carried. The first thing that came to my mind was a quote from old movies. You brought a knife to a gunfight. At such moments my brain thinks about strange things. I asked myself why I was even here, but I knew I had to find out the truth. I opened the knife and went into the next room. Lying there on the bed was Linda, naked. I couldn't believe my eyes. They both looked at me and were shocked. Charlie looked at my knife and said, Please don't hurt me. This guy was a coward. Linda lay there in shock, not saying a word. Now I felt completely in control of the situation. I told Charlie to start having sex with her. No, you don't have to do this in front of my husband, Linda screamed. Looks like she's found her voice. I told her to shut up. After this evening, I will no longer consider her my wife. Charlie was scared and started doing what I said. I kept telling him to take it harder. I didn't know if she enjoyed it or not. One thing was clear. She must have thought I was crazy and was afraid of me. She made sounds, but it was difficult to tell whether she was out of pleasure or fear. I continued to ask Charlie questions, and while he was having sex with her, he answered my questions. It turns out that Charlie was a real weakling. It turned out that Lisa was opening a new nightclub outside the city. There will be a female impersonator show, as well as many other performances. She contacted Linda and offered her exclusive rights to write and photograph the new club. She invited Linda to meet three female impersonators, Charlie, an Asian guy, and another one I hadn't met. He was black, Charlie said. They went to different clubs in the city to promote Lisa's club. Almost no one knew that they were female impersonators. They must have deceived me. They didn't say much so as not to give themselves away. I asked Charlie one more question. Did she sleep with all three of you? Did she ever say she couldn't or didn't want to do it? If she did it for an exclusive, it was a damn exclusive. Charlie looked at me and said, No, we never forced her. She always agreed. I took photos with my phone throughout the entire incident. I went to another room and cut all the clothes they were wearing. I needed to deal with my rage somehow, and this was the only thing I could think of. Charlie sat there, scared to death. I really thought about beating him to a pulp, but that wouldn't accomplish anything except land me behind bars. No thanks. I told Linda not to come home that night. I will move and find a lawyer. I don't know if she heard me. 
She got up and went to the bathroom. I heard her start vomiting. I left, returned the key card to the administrator and left. I should have felt better, but I didn't. I returned home and my children were home. I told them that I caught their mother cheating and that I would be moving out and filing for divorce. I didn't go into detail. Becky cried and said she hated her mother. Don't say that, Becky. Love your mother, but hate what she did. She always loved you. I don't know why she did what she did, but I can't stay married to her anymore. I can never trust her again. Where are you going, Dad? Brian asked. He tried to play the role of an adult, but I saw that he himself was on the verge of tears. I will live with your grandparents until I find a good apartment. You can stay here with your mother. Soon you will be independent. You can always call me if you need anything. The college deal remains in effect for both of you. I will pay my share as we agreed. I packed several suitcases with my personal belongings and spent the last night in the house. Becky even made me breakfast the next morning. As expected, Linda did not come home that night. My parents were devastated when I told them I was getting a divorce because Linda cheated. They asked if there was any chance of reconciliation, and I said no. Becky called me and said that some guy dropped her mother off around noon. It was the same car the woman had picked her up in yesterday. I didn't have the heart to tell her that the woman and the guy are the same person. On Monday, I went to see my friend Bob, who was an attorney, and explained to him what I knew and wanted to start the divorce process. I wanted to separate the bills and property. I told him that despite her infidelity, I would file for divorce due to irreconcilable differences for the sake of the children. If she resists the divorce, I will file for divorce for adultery and name names, including her friend Lisa. I had my phone with me at the motel and took photo after photo of Linda cheating. I made copies of these photos and told my lawyer to send them along with the divorce papers. I asked him to hurry up. He had it ready for the following Friday and delivered it to her at work. She tried to call me again and again, but I did not answer her calls. She even called my parents, but my father told her that he was not interested in him at the moment. One thing I learned is that Becky did her own research. She told me that she heard that Linda's old friend Lisa was back in town and opening a nightclub. I almost had to laugh when she told me there would be female impersonators, and she had to wonder if this was the woman her mom dated. Damn, this girl was smart. You knew that, isn't that right, Dad? She said after she told me. You caught Mom with one of them, didn't you? I told her I knew, but she could ask her mom about everything else. She said her mom probably wouldn't talk to her or Brian. It always ended in an argument about Linda ruining our family. She said that mom would go into her room and cry a lot. My lawyer froze all of our joint accounts. None of us could access them. I had my own credit card that I could use. I was sure that Linda also had a letter in her name only. Many of our bills were paid automatically from our checking account. Only they will be paid. It will only be for a couple of weeks. We could both live to see this moment. The day the papers were filed was the day I walked into the living room and met Beth. I knew I had to go home and talk to Linda. She should have gotten the divorce papers by now and I wanted to move on. I called ahead and Linda answered the phone. I told her that I would come for our last conversation. I knocked on the door and Linda opened it. It's still your house, you could have come in. I got the divorce papers. I can't believe you made copies of these photos. She said this while I was entering the house. Are you going to sign the papers and end this marriage? You never gave me a chance to explain myself. We can work things out. I know we can. I love you, Jay. There were tears in her eyes. Nonsense. You don't love me more than the man on the moon. You're afraid to be alone. You want to explain yourself to me. I'll tell you what I know, and if I'm wrong, you can correct me. You cheated on me. You weren't forced or even manipulated. It started when you said you didn't know about Lisa and her stash. Rumor has it that you found pleasure back then. Who told you this? Linda asked nervously. No one ever said anything to me, but I decided to mention it and see her reaction. I won't tell you anything. Now your friend Lisa is back in town, 
so you decided to have fun in front of me again, only this time you got caught. I believe that you actually got the job of writing an article about the new nightclub. Dumping with female impersonators was a bonus. If anyone we knew saw you with them, all you had to do was say they were your clients. No one would dispute that. I just can't believe I was duped for so many years. Speaking of having your cake and eating it too. We had a good life. I almost regret that I found out. But you continued to take risks. Now that I found out the truth, you disgust me. I don't even want to know how many men you had. I still wouldn't believe it. Straight up we both know from the beginning that you slept with Charlie, an Asian guy, and a black guy. I don't want to know the others. Please, Jay, let me speak. I'm sorry, I'm truly sorry. I was wrong, I can change. All I need is a chance to prove it to you. Just give me another chance. Becky said you bought holiday cruise tickets for us. Let's go together and start again. I'll use the tickets and start over, but it won't be with you. To me, you're dead. I want you to sign the papers and end this fake marriage. If you don't, I'll refile by cheating and using all the photos which you have copies of. According to our state, everything is divided in half. I propose to divide everything in half. You can keep the house and I will get half the value of our savings. I don't want much from the house except a few of my personal things that belong to me. I don't want anything that would remind me of you. I'm waiting two days, and if my lawyer doesn't get the papers you signed, I'll refile using treason. Don't test me because you'll lose. Just think about your parents, all your friends, and your children who will see the pictures. Knowing that you've cheated is one thing. Seeing the evidence is another. Two days is all you have. I turned and left. Linda signed the divorce papers and gave them to my lawyer the next day. He prepared a document dividing our property in half. I will receive the bulk of our savings, and she, in turn, will receive the house and furniture. My name will be removed from our checking account and joint credit cards. We will both keep our cars, and there will be no child support since our children are over 18 years old. Of course, there will be no alimony either. We will both keep our pension plans. I have already promised the children that I will pay my share of their education. They will have to work part-time during school years and summers, but will not have to take out loans. Bob explained to Linda that he would take the documents to a judge for approval. If she chooses, she can hire her own lawyer and review the proposed decree. Linda told him that she just wanted it to be over. Bob told me she looked depressed. She probably thought that since we had been married for many years, I could give her another chance. She knows that I have always been fair to her and would never do anything to harm the children. You could say she trusted me, something I no longer had for her. Becky told me that Linda cried when she found out I was planning a holiday cruise for the two of us to relax and start over without the kids at home. She realized that this time she had gone too far and was caught. When Bob returned from the judge, he told me that I could take my personal belongings. He even asked Linda if she wanted to be there when I picked up my things. She said she didn't want to, in fact she trusted me. I was able to pick up a few things I wanted in two pickup trips. Dad said I could store them in the basement. I actually didn't have much. The next day I received a call. Can I speak to Jay Bradford please? It's me, how can I help? It was a woman's voice. This is Beth, Beth Williams. We met a week ago. You asked me to check out the available apartments in our area. I couldn't believe she was calling me. The tone of my voice changed. Beth, I'm sorry I sounded so stern. I've had a pretty bad week. I'm so glad to hear from you. You mentioned apartments. Is there anything available for rent near you? Actually, there is. A couple of houses down the street. An elderly couple just moved out, and the owners haven't put up a for rent sign yet. Are you interested? Yes, of course. I can be at your place in an hour. Do you mind coming with me? I'll invite you to dinner later. She agreed, and I quickly cleaned myself up and went to see the apartment. Beth seemed so gentle and calm. We went and looked at the apartment. It had two bedrooms, and they provided a stove and refrigerator. There was even a microwave oven. I told the agent I was taking her. 
I could move in next weekend after they finish cleaning. The lease term will be for six months at a time. After paying the security deposit and the first month's rent, I took Beth to Red Lobster for dinner. I told her I was a little nervous because I hadn't dated in 20 years. If I do anything wrong, please tell me, I said. I told her a little about my life and where I work. Also that I now have two children in college. She asked about the divorce, and I told her it was in a 60-day waiting period. After this, I will be a single divorced man. I told her that I caught my wife cheating. She couldn't deny it because I had the photos, but I didn't mention Charlie and company. I mentioned that we had discussed divorce many times and how she promised she wouldn't do it again. I learned that this was not the first time, and there was no way that I would ever be able to trust her again. Your wife is a fool, Beth said, smiling at me. I remember telling her the same thing about her husband. We both laughed. I liked being with her. She was so kind and gentle. We had dinner and talked a little longer, and then I took her home. Beth, thank you for everything. I want to see you again. Jay, after this weekend, we'll be neighbors. I took her hands. See you Saturday, I said. I left, but I didn't really want to leave. She was like the opposite of Linda. I wanted to get to know her better. On Saturday, I brought some furniture to the apartment. I took the bedroom set out of the basement, as well as a few other things. Dad and I were carrying the dresser when Beth appeared at the door. Help is needed, she asked. My car was full of kitchen supplies. Mom gave me most of them. She said I needed some things. Beth helped put things in the closets. I introduced her to my dad, and he smiled at her. Nice to meet you, Beth, he said. We returned to pick up another shipment of furniture. These were things for the living room. Beth came with me in the car. Mom was surprised, but very glad to meet her. I told my mom that Beth had found me an apartment and that she was my neighbor. After we finished unloading the furniture and putting my things away, Dad went home. I asked Beth if she wanted to go to dinner again to thank her for her help. Can we go back to the living room where we met and order a Reuben sandwich? Beth asked. I liked this idea. Joe waved to us as we walked in. It was late afternoon and a little more crowded. We were seated and ordered drinks until our dinner arrived. Beth told me more about herself and that she has an older sister. She said she told her sister about me and her sister couldn't believe she let me take her home. Now she wants to meet you. She's probably worried about me because I jumped away. I told her you were getting a divorce and she almost went crazy. When we returned to Beth's apartment, we held hands again. This time I leaned down and kissed her softly on the lips. Sorry, but I've been wanting to do this since we met. She looked at me but didn't say anything about it. Good night, Jay. Don't forget that you need to meet my sister next week so she doesn't go crazy. I went to my apartment and spent my first night in my new house. The next day I went to my mom and dad's for dinner. They asked me if I had heard anything from Linda. I told them it was over and I was just biding my time until my divorce was final. Mom mentioned Beth and I told her what I knew about her. I waited a couple of days before I called Beth. I didn't want to impose. I invited her to dinner, but she told me to come to her place and she would cook us spaghetti. Of course I said yes. We sat on the couch and ate dinner using the TV tables and watched TV. I liked being with her. She was so easy to talk to. I knew I had to go home since she had school to teach the next day. At the door I kissed her again, not passionately, but very tenderly. On Saturday we went to see her sister Sandy. I was a little on edge. I didn't really know what to expect. Sandy cooked us dinner and I met her husband Tom and her two teenagers. She asked me what I did and I told her about my job and where I went to college. I told her kids that I have two kids in college and what they are studying. They said they hope to go to college someday too. After dinner, Tom and I went into the living room and had a cup of coffee. We were the same age and seemed to have a lot in common. When the girls returned, Sandy became much nicer. Beth told me on the way home that her sister approved of me. We both laughed. This time, before I went home, 
I kissed her more passionately. I told her that I liked being with her. She said she liked me too. Jay, I don't mind dating you. In fact, I enjoy being around you. I just won't sleep with you until your divorce is final. I told her it was normal. I just love being with her. We started having dinner together at least twice a week. On weekends, we would have dinner at her parents' or mine. We were a couple, although we didn't sleep together. A week before my divorce became final, I introduced Beth to Becky and Brian. We all went to dinner together. I told the children I didn't want to hear anything about their mother. The kids loved Beth. We went out for pizza, and the kids asked Beth a thousand questions. Not much really, but they did ask her a lot of questions. They were so glad that I found someone so I wouldn't be alone. They even told Beth about it. She just laughed. She was so easy to talk to. Becky surprised me when she asked Beth a question. Are you going on a holiday cruise with Dad? He has tickets for Christmas Eve and back on New Year's Day. I was stunned. I thought about this as the time got closer. Beth looked a little stunned. Dad, Becky said. She's a woman. She needs to know ahead of time to plan her wardrobe. I know you care about her. Otherwise, you wouldn't have asked us to meet her. Beth, it's true. I do have two tickets for a holiday cruise. I was going to ask you after my divorce became final next week, but a certain young lady let the cat out of the bag. I know this is a big decision, and I understand. Yes, I'll go, Beth interrupted. I'd love to go on a cruise with you. As for Becky, she's right. A woman needs more time to plan. Don't be so hard on her. I saw her smile at Becky. I felt the sincerity in her voice. The following week my divorce became final, and I was not at all unhappy. I asked Beth if she wanted to come celebrate with me. She was more than happy to go. She mentioned that a new nightclub had opened nearby and that I would like to go there. I never told her the details of my divorce and said we could look into it. She told me that some teachers at school said that there are female impersonators and also celebrity impersonators such as Elvis, Ricky Nelson, and many others. I knocked on her door and she looked great. She was wearing a black dress that showed off her figure and it came about six inches above her knees. I remember telling her that I never had a teacher like her when I was in school. We invited Sandy and Tom to come with us. I didn't know what to expect or if I should say anything to Beth. The place was packed but felt like a Las Vegas nightclub. We were seated at a table and ordered drinks. The imitators were extraordinarily good. They looked and sounded like real stars. We ordered dinner, and while we were eating, female impersonators came on stage. Oh my God, it can't be guys, Tom said. Easy there, kid, Sandy laughed. You'll stick your hand down their pants, and you might not like what you find. They performed songs of famous female performers to the soundtrack. Of course, these were the original voices we heard. I recognized one of them, whose name was Charlie. The Asian woman's name was Kim, and the black woman's name, whom I was seeing for the first time, was Sable. Their numbers were good. But I didn't like the images that came to mind. I knew Linda was very familiar with the three of them. After the show, the dancing started, and I realized I couldn't lie to Beth. I told her the truth about Linda and how I caught her with one of the impersonators. I said I didn't want to hide any secrets from her. Beth kissed me. I read your wife's article about the nightclub. I asked you to bring me here, hoping that you would be honest with me. I felt like you were hiding something because you never mentioned where your ex worked or who she was with. I knew it was a good club from the people at school, so I didn't try to trick you. I love you, Jay. I have no doubts. She kissed me again passionately. Hey, you two, get a room, Sandy laughed. I plan to as soon as we leave here, Beth replied. Beth, I never lied to you. There were things I didn't want to remember. I'm sorry if you thought otherwise. I love you, Jay, and I want you to know that you can tell me anything. You don't have to keep it to yourself. I'm here for you if you ever need to talk. We left the club and took Sandy and Tom home. They thanked us for a wonderful evening and said we should do it again someday. On the way home I asked Beth, your place or mine? Yours, please, 
was her reply with a smile. We arrived at my apartment. I couldn't believe how nervous I was. I haven't been with another woman in over 20 years, and it's been over three months since I've been with Linda. Beth looked at me and asked, Do you love me, Jay? I'm not used to giving myself to men. Ray, my ex, was only the second man I've been with. I've always been shy when it comes to dating, but with you, everything seems different. To another. Yes, I think I love you. All I can think about is how to make you happy. This will be new and different for both of us. With these words we kissed, tenderly, but with passion. We entered my bedroom, and I unbuttoned her dress. We let it fall to the floor. She was wearing very sexy black lingerie. I bought it for you. I hope you like it. I like it. I'm delighted. I kissed her again and unclasped her bra. We had sex. After that night, we spent every night together. Sometimes in her apartment, sometimes in mine. We didn't have sex every night, but we did cuddle a lot. It's time to get ready for your cruise. It was funny, but her parents and my parents were old-fashioned and didn't approve of us traveling as single people. They didn't say it directly, but we both felt it. Our parents said that in their time they did not travel like this. People got married first. I told them that times are different now. I took Becky and Brian aside and told them that I could ask Beth to marry me. Will they have any problems with this? After all, I will only be divorced for a little over a month. They were happy for me and told me they loved Beth and knew she made me happy. I told them that Beth and I had never talked about this and she might want to wait. I just wanted to know how they feel about it. We flew to Florida on Christmas Eve. The cruise ship was great and we had a queen cabin. We attended the welcome meeting for lack of another word. We were told about the rules of the ship and the many activities that would be taking place over the next week. We were both very excited. The ship was supposed to sail in an hour. Beth and I stood on the deck looking out at the ocean. She knew me so well. What's wrong, Jay? Is there something you want to tell me? No secrets, remember? I smiled at her. I had tears in my eyes and told her how much I loved her. Maybe I was just caught up in the moment. What is it, Jay? You can tell me, Beth said. I took a ring out of my pocket. Beth, I know we haven't known each other very long. You may think it's too early in our relationship, but I know how I feel about you. Will you marry me? Oh God, yes, yes, of course I will. When do you want to get married? Tonight, on this ship. I asked the captain, and he said he could do it. He has all the necessary papers. He's done it many times. So, you will marry me tonight, and it will be our honeymoon. We both knew that a lot of people would say that we needed to get to know each other better, but we were both sure of what we wanted. We wanted to be together. To hell with all the obstacles. Beth cried as she agreed. I contacted the captain, and he announced over the loudspeaker that an hour after the ship departed, there would be a wedding in the main dining room. I put on my suit and waited in the dining room for Beth. She came out in a beautiful blue dress. She later said she bought it for New Year's Eve, but it was a much better occasion. The hall was full of well-wishers. Everyone loves surprise weddings. As soon as we said our, yes, everyone applauded. The first thing we did was call our parents and Becky and Brian to let them know we were getting married. We heard crying on the other end of the phone on every call. We went to one of the many bars and danced. The captain said that the buffet was ready for dinner, and we were the first to go get food. It was a wonderful start to a wonderful honeymoon and new life. During the cruise, we visited three islands. We ate a lot of delicious food and danced every evening. Not a single day passed without us making love. The New Year's party was great, but we spent the whole week celebrating ourselves. We made sure to celebrate the New Year with a real bang. When we got off the plane on our return, we were greeted by Sandy and Tom. Needless to say, Beth and Sandy cried. Take care of my little sister, do you hear? Sandy said. I hugged Sandy and said, I will always be there for her. They took us to dinner and we told them about the cruise. Beth even told Sandy how often and where we made love. Sandy looked at me and just smiled. 
we returned home and lived in Beth's apartment. We talked to my landlord, and he said I could move out, but I wouldn't be able to get my deposit back. We decided to do this because it was the cheapest option. Life went on as usual, and we enjoyed it. Sometimes we went out to dinner, and sometimes we stayed at home. We spent most of our free time together. I spent very few nights on the road, only when absolutely necessary. I wanted to be home with Beth. One day I came home and Beth looked at me differently. I couldn't understand what kind of look this was. Okay, what's the problem? I don't recognize that look. Did I do something wrong? I'll leave it up to you. You got me pregnant. There were tears in her eyes. What? When? How? I mean, I thought you said you couldn't have children. I must have looked shocked out of my mind. She looked at me. What I'm pregnant. When about three months ago, most likely during our honeymoon. How we made wild love for days on end. I asked the doctor, and she said I could not have children due to my physical condition. She said it would be much more difficult, but not impossible. So, are you happy or angry? You still look shocked. I hugged her and told her I thought it was wonderful. We both started over and will have our own child. Correction, Beth said. We're having twins. Yes, I'm sure, I just got back from the doctor. Should be in six months. I was really happy and told her about it. We decided that we could live in the apartment for a while longer, but we would look for a house. We talked and decided that after the children were born, I would have a vasectomy. Two children would be enough, and she wouldn't have to worry about birth control. I was a very happy man and a future father again. First, I'll tell you a few things we learned after returning from our honeymoon. Beth talked to her sister, who told her that her ex-husband Ray had married his secretary. They wanted to get married before the baby was born. When the child was born, he was not white. The boy was Puerto Rican or Mexican. It was much darker. Now Ray wants an annulment, but his secretary is fighting it. Becky and Brian are doing well in college. They got along much better with their mother. I think the night Beth and I went to the nightclub, Linda was there. Becky said it made her mom realize what a person she had lost. She still works at the magazine and dates occasionally. She didn't bring anyone home to introduce the children. According to Becky, Linda and Lisa are no longer friends. She places some of the blame for her situation on Lisa. Lisa was last seen leaving the country and moving to Amsterdam. As for Beth and I, we couldn't be happier. After the children are born, Beth will take a short vacation. She wants to go back to teaching, and we already have two grandmothers who are willing to babysit. It's so strange how two people on the rocks meet in a bar, of all places, and their lives change completely. We sometimes go back to that living room and order a Reuben sandwich with fries. Life is beautiful if you have someone to share it with. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one.